Hi, Graham Roberts here. Um, I'm just going to show a very quick tutorial about how to use a J combo box in NetBeans. And the reason for this is a request that I've received. Um, so that's what we're going to do. And I'm going to, as usual, start from the beginning. Here's NetBeans. It's happened to be 7.1, I think. I'm going to create a new project and I'm going to have a Java application and I'm so I'm going to click next um, I don't care what I call it in this particular case so it's going to give it its default name Java application 33 for the project um, what I'm going to make sure though is I don't create a main class see this isn't checked and the reason I don't want a main class is because I'm going to create a form in NetBeans on which I can put a J combo box so I still want it set as the main project, although as you will see I don't have any other projects in my NetBeans IDE at the moment. So here we are, we've got that. Now you may be thinking that uh, what I do next is file new whatever, but actually um, we're just going to click on the project, uh, right click, go for the new option and ask for a JFrame form because that's what we want. Again, it doesn't really matter what I call this for this um, tutorial. I can call it new J frame or I can give it a proper name. I'm going to use the default name. When it comes to packages, I could uh, give it a name or I could use the default. It really doesn't matter at the moment. Um, if you want to know more about default packages, basically all that means is that if you don't use a default, which is a good idea, you give it a name which will act as kind of like a path to your objects that you create but I'm going to ignore that and just go to finish and here I get a form a form has two parts to it of course it has the design part and the source part where the code is all of this has been generated by NetBeans any objects I add to this will actually be down here uh, when we see that in a moment when we add a J combo box. We add what I call the screen furniture in the design area where the auto layout is. Now in order to see a combo box work we really need to see also another uh, control or object which is going to be a J text field. Well that's what it would be called. I'm going to put it down here and I'm going to give it a little bit of room and I need a button because I want to be able to see the result of this um, I'm not going into uh, the more difficult area of picking it up on the fly but rather just when someone the user clicks the button that uh, what's in the combo box is transferred as a value to the text box or field I'm going to give this a uh, name uh, not a name, sorry. I'm going to give it a legend. Just simply click me as a, a feed back to the user that if you click it, uh, something will happen. I'm going to leave this with the default value of JTEX field 1 because it's of no moment to us just now. Well, let's find the star of this particular show, which is a combo box, and there it is. I've done a video on the list box. Uh, this combo box is very similar. Um, let's just see what happens when I run the program right now. Well it comes up with do you want this uh, default package as it were and I've said yeah okie dokie and it's machinating away compiling and then it gives me what we've got here. Now if I click uh, item 3 which is a default value that's placed there, and I click here of course nothing happens and this is because the event handler has not been configured um, and put it another way in, in kind of NetBeans speak or Java speak the performance um, um, hasn't been and listener haven't been configured so let's quit that come back to the button we double click in the design area on the button and here we uh, say what we want to happen when the button is clicked. Now what do we want to happen? 
Well, we want the value that is in the combo box transferred to the text field. So that's, let's just do that. Well, the text field is called J text field. There are many ways to know this. Uh, one way is just to look and see. I won't do that just now. It's J text field. And we're going to set the text, so set text seems a good idea. And there it is in now helpful context feedback. Uh, null at the moment, so we're going to set it with nothing. Well, that's better than it was because it's got a wrong legend on it, but we just say, okay, what we want to do is actually put into there the value from the combo box. So here's we need to know what the combo box is called. And we can try combo box 1. Is that it? Well, it looks like it is. Seems to be happy. So we're going to get uh, the value from there. So we're going to use a getter. Get selected what? What can we do? Item index. Well, item seems good. So we're going to get the item. We get a complaint here because the item is uh, really needing to be text. Well, one way to convert it to text is to use the to string opera, um, method, which every object has. And in this case, we'll take uh, what's in the combo box as an object and we'll convert it to a string object. And uh, then it will be able to set as text in the text field. Let's see if that works and run that. And uh, what we get is this, what we had before. Let's change the item. Let's change it to item 4 and then click it. Click me, the button. What's happened? You can see that item 4 has popped in. That's good. Now, uh, so let's do item 1 just to make sure the very first one works. So we've got a way of retrieving the data from a combo box we happen to be putting into a text field. Okay, now we could talk in terms of message sends here, by the way. There's a message send and receive going on between these objects. So it's, it's, it's object-oriented programming happening here, but also event-driven paradigm being exploited as well. Anyway, there's one last thing to show you, I think. And that is, how do you change the values that are in the combo box? Now this turns out to be uh, quite easy. There's two ways to do it. One, you can add to what's in the combo box by using the add method. Um, and the other way is simply at design stage to put the values in. And that's what I'm going to show just now. So let's click on the combo box. And what we want to see is in fact model. So I'm going down here trying to find model. Now if I click on the ellipsis which is to the right here we get this pop-up dialog and we can just knock all of those out and put in our uh, favorite colors. So we've got red, green, blue. How oh, about a purple? Yeah, oh, purple. That should do us for the moment and click OK. And now when I run my program, and you probably guessed it, yes, I should be able to select my colors as I did my items. Before we go, let's have a little look down the bottom here. Uh, what we've been adding, we added a combo box field and button, and look, they've appeared here at the bottom of our um, file. So they're the instance variables of this frame. The ones that we've added anyway. There are many more, of course, that are hidden at the moment. Uh, data hiding, remember, one of the principles of Java. Now while we're at that, I talked about adding. Where would you add a component to, or, uh, to the combo box? Well, it turns out you can add it in many different places. Of course you can. But where I'm going to do it is just in the constructor for the form itself, which inherits from JFrame. Just after the initializing of the components, uh, we want them initialized, don't we, before we use them. That's always a good idea. So what we're going to put into here is this statement. 
J combo box one dot add item string magenta. What will it do? Well, when we run our program, that magenta color will be at the bottom of our list even though it's not in the model. So that as is there, we might say programmatically. So it's added on the fly as the program runs. So you can programmatically uh, add or remove items in a, a combo box. You can also do that with a list, by the way. Hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, it's been useful.